How do you feel emotionally? Emotionally, it's been really weird. So the emotional part was more difficult before I started the treatment mm. because I still didn't know if they were going to accept me into the program. When the breast cancer showed up, I didn't know if that was going to disqualify me because I knew the seven weeks was going to be brutal. This was a trial thing that you the were taking The trial that's yeah. hopefully three weeks instead of seven. And I knew that would be a massive difference in long term. Not, not mm. Forget the seven weeks you're doing it. It's when, it, when you do it seven weeks and depending on how big the tumor is, it could affect you the rest of your life. So the biggest stress was getting into the treatment, uh, which finally did happen. So emotionally, very up and down beforehand. Once the treatment started, the harder part was physical, mm. getting through that. And of course, that plays on your emotions too. So I did a bit of crying overall, probably maybe a grand total of 15 minutes. Mm. But, uh, you know, it just kind of hits you. And then you're like, okay, you just have to suck it up. And there's always somebody that's worse off than you are, especially when you see kids around there. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, there were children, mm. like young kids around you. Yeah having treatment which may or may not save their lives. Right. What was that like to, to see uh, on a daily basis? Reality check. Reality check. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody that's there has cancer. You just don't know which one. So cancer is, a, is, a, is very uh, democratic. It totally doesn't care who you are. Uh, we're all kind of in the same boat, but different boats, because some may, uh, they don't know if they're going to be cured. I knew my chances were pretty good. But when you see kids, that's when you really stop feeling sorry for yourself because uh, the parents go through, the kids may not even know what they're going through. That there, there, there were kids that were six, eight months old, toddlers, children, uh, you know, newborns practically. And they have to put them to sleep to do the treatment so they don't move. Um, that's when you, like, you, you just don't feel sorry for yourself mm -hmm. anymore. It's so, okay, you just gotta suck it up and deal with it. You had an amazing moment. This was... Um a little video of you with the bell being rung to signify the end of your treatment. I'll just let you watch it. People stirring it three times. I did. Yeah. It was hard not to cry, I tell you. I'm crying just looking at it again. Because you wait, you wait, you just can't wait to ring the bell. Um, and. Uh, yeah, it's still in God's hands, so to speak, whether you're going to be 100% or not. But uh, you hope for the best. Yeah, I'm going to lose you. <laughs> <Let's see. sighs> yeah. <laughs> no, the people were great. They were really phenomenal. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it was wonderfully moving to watch that yeah. for me. Mm. I, I can't even imagine for you to go through it and then to watch it back and to feel that. And I can see. Yeah, you. because you have, you have, you know. So when when you're going through the treatments, you have some feeling sorry for yourself, treat, uh, tears. You, they pick, you pick your music, what do you want to listen to? So usually it was Bob Marley, which was great. It was the best music I didn't listen to. One time I picked Elton John, and then he starts singing, I'm still standing, and I'm like, he, he sang that to me in Paris um, during the French Open in the 80s. Went to his concert and said, I dedicated this, this song to Martina, I'm still standing, because he knew that was one of my favorites. So when they're, you know, I'm, I'm in this freaking mask, uh, not not able to move and that song came on I'm like oh great so I can't really cry because I can't swallow <laughs> I can't move uh, so you 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 have tears of feeling sorry for yourself this tear was just happiness mm. at the end because you've been waiting for seven damn weeks and um, yeah I mean the the work is not finished but the worst part is behind me mm. and now I know I will just keep feeling better every day. What and have they told you about the prognosis going forward now? Uh, it's very, very good. I mean, as far as they know, I'm cancer free. I still need to do, deal with the right breast. Uh, probably will have radiation, but that's a couple of weeks and it's like, that doesn't mm. even count. And uh, that's more pre pre preventative than anything else. And, uh, you know, should be, should be good to go. It's like 99% uh, uh, sol solvable. Um, so I definitely will not be missing any of my checkups. Uh, I'll be very diligent about it, but the prognosis is excellent. Um, but you never know, just like, you, you know, you never know. You mentioned music and your agent Mary had this yes. wonderful idea. 
of getting a lot of your friends from the tennis world to send a song mm -hmm. to rally your spirits. And they all sent songs with messages. And I want just to go through some of these. I found it really moving, actually. It was amazing. Um, Chris Everett, we talked about, yeah. who obviously had just had cancer herself, treated, I didn't know, at the same clinic as you, your great rival. And she sent you Lean On Me by yeah. Bill Withers, which includes a line, I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need someone to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Uh, you're making me cry again. See, I couldn't. It's making I, me feel quite emotional. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even read the stuff. When Mary first sent it to me, I just started crying, and I'm crying now. God, I'm such a softy. Um, and I, I, I started reading it, and I'm like, I cannot listen to the music because I'll definitely be bawling my eyes out. So I just kind of, one day at a time, I read a little bit from what everybody wrote because it was so moving. Lindsay Davenport, what she said, Sam Smith, Claire Balding, uh, Chrissy. Well, Claire I Balding mean, sent you something inside so strong yeah. by Lady Safari. Uh, something inside so strong, I know that I can make it. Billie Jean King sent you I Will Survive by Gloria Yeah, Gaynor. thanks a lot for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a happy song. Uh, but yeah, it was yeah, just uh, Pam such Shriver, a... Pam Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell, yeah. which had the lyrics, I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose, and still somehow, it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. Yeah. Um, and Sue Barker just, I Believe in You by Il Devo. I, I know. It's like, I mean, it's t total tearjerkers, all of them. And, uh, and then what they said to me personally, uh, outside of the song, mm. was just so meaningful um, that I had to like parse it to myself a little bit at a time because it was so overwhelming. And you don't realize how much you mean to people until they mm. do something like that. And you know, that's, that's really special. 